Hey guys, it's Zachary from How I Zone, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Nespresso Virtuo Next coffee machine and drink a lot of coffee. Okay, I've cleared the table, let's talk machine first. Now this is the new Nespresso Virtuo Next. Now as far as Nespresso machine goes, it's pretty much standard. You've got your little drip tray and cup holder out front. This can be adjusted to three heights, so depending on the size of the coffee you make, at least if you're using a smaller cup, it won't splash all over the place. Now on the side, you've got your used capsule bin. Right? And this is also plastic, easily removed and clean. And at the back, water reservoir. Now, as an espresso machine goes, all you do is pop in a capsule, press a button, and coffee comes out. Now, as part of the virtual line, this virtual next machine uses stuck the virtual pods. Right? These are the larger pods with the barcode at the back. It goes in, it reads the barcode, does the spinny spinny stuff, and coffee comes out automatically. Now, I reviewed the Virtual Plus machine last year and in it I basically explained everything about the whole Virtual system. If you want to know more about that, check out the Virtual Plus review. Now, comparing the Virtual Next to the Virtual Plus, that machine was uh, felt a lot more advanced. It, it was automated in the sense that you can press a button, it opens up, put your pod in, press another button, it closes by itself, it makes coffee all those things. This, on the other hand, feels a little bit more industrial. Now, in a way, I do like it. Uh, um, I like the contrast and the design of the machine. This whole red, you know, bright cherry red lacquered look contrasts very well with the black. But in a sense that it feels a little bit backwards because this is a manual machine. Right, you have this huge latch at the top where you have to unlock and open up yourself. Once you pop in a pod, now we won't do that now because we'll be making a lot of coffee later, but you're going to have to press it back down yourself. Now, you need a little bit, a little bit of pressure to do this. So like for me sitting down now, I actually have to press it down quite hard, use both hands because now I have to latch it back and lock it myself before I press the button to make coffee. Now, I don't really have a problem with this. I, I kind of feel this is a very nice manual way of making automated coffee. But I do get why some people are frustrated with this because there is a certain level of force needed to press it down. The nerdy side of me also kind of likes this manual system on the Virtual Next more because I kind of feel that the lid opens up larger than the Virtual Plus and I can peer inside better and see how things work now. Like these two sort of metal bars, you know, where it catches the pots and slides down into the bin and especially where all the puncture holes are and in the middle you can see this the the main one where water goes in wait let's get a used pot so we can all look at this better all right so you see one big hole in the center and surrounded by more little holes so you can actually see where it punctures the middle hole is where i Yes, the water goes in because you can see water droplets from there and that's where it spins. So the machine pours water in, the whole thing spins, mixes the coffee up, brews the coffee and then coffee comes out the sides and then it goes down the spout into your drink. So yeah, pretty cool. I like that. I know I said we won't talk about centrifusion at the beginning but let's talk about centrifusion just for a little bit. With the launch of the Virtual Next, Nespresso basically updated their brewing recipe um, for centrifusion into two stages. So stage one, it sort of spins a lot faster now to pump out that, that rich, thick crema of theirs. And in stage two, it slows down to brew the rest of the coffee. Now, according to Nespresso, this is a sort of a tweak that 
they've, they've managed to improve on since the first Nespresso Virtual Plus was launched. Now who's to say what's what? I know in a lot of sort of coffee snob circles, you know, there's, there's discussion that this isn't really an espresso, this isn't really crema because, you know, it's not made through pressure. It's basically just foam from spinning around. And I agree, this isn't, this isn't, strictly speaking, crema. This isn't uh, an espresso. And this method of brewing is basically proprietary and all new to Nespresso or to anybody else. Nobody does coffee like this. And it might be a bit strange, but if you enjoy this, go ahead and drink the coffee. I don't have all the coffees from Nespresso. At this point, I think they've launched about 30 different flavors or 30 different capsules with eight new ones um, with the Virtual Next. I have about 18 of them in this box. All right, yeah, and we're gonna try all of this today. Okay, we'll start with the espressos. I have five of them going from the lowest intensity to the highest intensity. We have the Volteso intensity four, the Tocano intensity five, the Altissio Intensity 9, and the Il Cafe and Diavolito, which are both Intensity 11s. All of these are espresso pods. They all have the same amount of coffee in them and they brew the same amount of coffee. So that number doesn't technically denote strength. It just denotes the, the flavor or the taste of the coffee that comes out. Anyway, I don't have espresso cups. I have quite a lot of there's Nespresso cups over the years, but I don't have any Espresso cups, but I have these uh, shot glasses, these from Macworld 2009, and these are from the movie The Hangover. Uh, technically, they should work because an Espresso for an Espresso is 40ml and a shot glass is about 44ml, so this should work and let's make coffee. Ooh, you hear that pop? That's what happens when it punctures the, the capsules. So, fingers crossed, let's hope this works. I'll leave the camera rolling. And let's make our coffee. While this is going, I also have some, uh, you know, I brought some friends from home. This is a scale. So let's see if it actually makes 40 ml of coffee. So this Macworld glass is about 79 grams. Let's tear it. Look at that foam. Look at that foam. Look, it covers the entire glass. Now it slows down. You can hear it. Oh, it's, it's, oh, it's gonna overflow. It's gonna overflow. It's going, it doesn't. Wow. Oh, look at that. Look at how. Okay, I've got to sh film this close up. This is so cool. This is the first one. Okay, it did leak a bit. Yeah, 40 ml, 40.02. This is exactly, so this is, oh, it did leak a bit. Ah, uh, okay, never mind. We'll clean up later. Let's keep going. See? See that? It the the metal rails it will pop up. Oh I moved it too slow, it didn't pop up properly. It's supposed to pop this into there. Okay, never mind. Next. It'll get better as we go along. Oh this leak. This leaked a lot more. Look at how much it leaked. Look at that. Okay, I'm really going to have to clean up next, but there's nothing much we can do about it now. There we go. See that? It flew in. Let's 
see the amount of sort of force you need to put onto this thing. Huh. This one's perfect. Didn't leak at all. Okay, so we're done with the five pores and you realize that by the time I finish the last one, the first one foam has gone through uh, quite a bit of disintegration and popping. It's no longer uniform. It, it, it doesn't look like crema anymore. Now it just looks like foam. It just looks like bubbles in a bubble bath, you know, where you, you get very un-uniform like uh, structure on the bubble. Some are bigger, some are smaller, and you see them pop. And throughout all this, the second one, the one that, that sort of exploded, um, the Tocanto actually held up the most. The first and the third one is disintegrating really fast. The fourth one, you can see the bubbles popping. And the fifth one is the newest, I, I guess. So it's the freshest. Let's try the coffee starting from the least intense to the most intense. We'll do the Volteso first. And I've got some Nespresso spoons. I can't exactly drink all these coffees we still have a lot more to go and those are larger volumes so let's do the whole coffee slurping thing it's actually quite sweet the bitterness is at the back but it doesn't have that usual Nespresso like burnt sort of flavor it's quite fun this is the Volteso this is intensity 4 right I would still say that this is an uh, a, a strong espresso this would probably really go well with with milk or, or, or some kind of drink but I could drink this on its own I, I could enjoy this just like that I have extra water and a bowl, clean my spoon. Mm. This is sharper, sharper as in a little bit more bitter up front. So it's more like, uh, you don't taste that, that sweetness. It, it goes from, from the beginning of slurping to the end it has that one note bitterness, which I'm not that fond of actually. Doesn't taste of anything much. This was nice. This not so. Altissio, intensity nine. Where yeah, this foam is going away and this foam is brown, right? These two are light sort of light brown this is dark brown this this foam is like chocolate in color interesting i talk as if i know what i'm doing i don't <laughs> just tasting coffee ooh ooh wow oh this is harsh Oh, but the back is nice. Like it's harsh in the middle. No, not harsh at in the front. But after it's gone down, that, that sort of aftertaste is nice. I still like the Volteso the most. It, it has the most balance. It's the sweetest. This also sort of has a dark foam. I wonder if that has got anything to do with how dark roasted these beans are. Mm. This is the Diabolito. Interesting.
Okay, I really need to change this water now. Luckily, we are at the end. <laughs> oh, that's the new Il Cafe. The new Il Cafe is it's a new caps. You know what I think? I like the Volteso, which is 4 on the intensity list. It is sweet. It's actually slightly acidic. Good balance. And I actually do like the last one, the Il Cafe. At intensity 11. It has some taste to it. It has a mouthfeel. It, it's, it's nice. It's chewy. I, I don't know what chewy means. It, it just... It, you know, some, some things... In the mouth, it's it's like water. It's just very watery. It just goes down, and some things feel thicker. That that's that's what I mean by chewy. It just has more bite. These three, not much. These these three three are are bitter in a way that it wasn't pleasant to me. This was the worst. This this was the one that exploded. Um, had the best foam consistency but I felt this was the worst this was the harshest the, 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 the most uh, one note of all of these okay we're back and all cleaned up now we've moved on to the double espressos and grand lungos now there are three double espressos and four grand lungos I have two of each I have the double espresso Scuro and Chiaro and the Grand Lungo Inizio and Fortado. Now, um, the reason why this is together, it's because they actually have the same size capsules. And if we bring our trusted weighing scale, you would see that the Grand Lungo and double espresso capsules also have about the same weight. Now this means that these actually have the same amount of coffee in them but because of the virtual systems barcoding system you're going to get different amounts of coffee brewed with this. So the Grand Lungo is going to brew 150 ml while the double espresso is going to brew an 80 ml. Now this is where you will get a different strength in coffee. The Grand Lungo will be slightly weaker because it's a little bit more diluted while the double espresso would be thicker and stronger. But let's get to tasting. So from right, my right to left, we have the Chiaro, Scuro, Inizio, and Fortado. <sighs> For the double espressos, interestingly, the Chiaro which was 8 on the intensity scale feels more bitter than the Scuro which is intensity 11. I prefer the Scuro. Right? It feels more complex, more uh, uh, full-bodied. I guess it's, it's not just coffee bitterness. This, this feels like it's over-roasted kind of bitterness it's it's just harsh and biting how about the grand lungos then ooh ooh what was this the inizio again this is the number 4 on the intensity scale it's it's floral sweet it's like jasmine or hints of jasmine again I don't know what I'm talking about. This is just what I taste. I like this. Mmm. <sighs> and there's no bite. There's, there's, there's just a little bit of that usual Nespresso, you know, over roasted bitterness. Now this is the most recent cup and as you can see that, that whole foam thing. From the side, it's still there. But if you look at the top, you can see it like breaking up. Quite a lot. This was the Fortado. Okay, let's let's try to blend this 
I don't know why I'm blending the foam in, there's, there's no reason to, let's get rid of it. Unless you don't want to taste that. Now when you're actually drinking these coffees, you can go ahead and drink everything. I'm, I'm just removing the foam now because you know, I'm just quickly testing the coffees and I don't want to like sip the foam. Ah, oh. mm. oh, the Grand Lungos are nice. Both of these are good. The the Inizio was sweeter, like I said, more floral. This is uh, uh, more balanced, more neutral, right? It's it's not too sweet, as in it's not acidic. It's not too bitter. It, it's 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 great. This this is a great drink. The Fortado number eight on the Grand Lungo scale. Yeah, so. Of the double espressos and grand lungos, I would actually do most of them, except this. Yeah, the chiaro. Let's let's try it again. Just to double confirm. <sighs> yep. Yep. Nope. Next up, I have Barista Creations. This is a line of pots from Nespresso, which are blends that are designed specifically to be used in uh, milk-based drinks or any other kind of drinks and sort of flavored coffee. Again, let's do from here to there first. Oh, actually, no, let's, let's try the caramel cookie first. I, I, I want to taste something new. Ooh, this smells really good. Try to incorporate some of this since it's a larger cup now and I can do this with much ease. Mmm. That that caramel smell or uh, sort of like vanilla caramel smell is very strong. It wafts up in the air. Um, it slightly tinges the taste. It's there, but it's also kind of a light coffee. <sighs> Again, lighter, sweeter coffee. Probably goes well with milk, but can be drunk on its own like this. Both these coffees are pretty mild my taste and I would drink them like this if I had a large cup it would be great in the morning it's not too uh, biting not too bitter you know not not the kind of of coffee where some people just like that that ultra dark ultra burnt kind of coffee this is just about right it's great oh Oh no, mm. oh wait, wait, this is, this is so different. Okay, this is so different that right at the beginning, I thought this was bad. So different from usual Nespresso coffees. But this is nice, this is, this is kind of acidic sour, this is, there's a plumminess to it, it's, they are both called Bianco. Bianco, the larger one is Bianco Forte. This is Bianco Legro. They taste nothing alike. This just tastes like a uh, 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 sort of filtered coffee. Basic, yeah, Nespresso kind of filtered coffee. It's it, it, in the sense that it's watered down. It, it's good on its own. This has flavor. This it has some kind of sourness to it. It's kind of acidity. It's kind of like a marmite kind of oh this is nice i might even drink this yeah wow of all the coffees i've drank so far this is this is my favorite at this point i'll drink this ah uh, shouldn't have shot an 80 ml cup of coffee but yeah it's kind of like coffee marmite Bianco Legro, really good. <sighs> mm. 
Mm. Stormio is more of a classic Nespresso uh, dark roasted bitterness. Uh, I wouldn't say I am impressed by both of these. I wouldn't mind drinking them, but they're not my go-to. Try that again. Of the first sip, I prefer this over this. <sighs> yep, that's a more sort of acidic sourness to it, brighter coffee. <sighs> this is a milder brew. Both of these are or, or, or it feels like a medium coffee not like the usual dark roasts that uh nespresso coffees have they they don't have that biting harshness of bitterness at the back of your throat it actually feels quite light at the front of your mouth your tongue it's uh well balanced yeah i prefer this though it's a lot more mellow a lot more sour and acidic which is the kind of coffee i like i would say this is the colombian and this is the mexican the last two brews of the day are our big boys these are the two biggest capsules that nespresso has for the virtual system the alto dolce this makes a 414 ml cup of coffee I you won't call it a cup anymore it's a tumbler of coffee this was around with the when the virtual plus was launched and this is the brand new one that was launched with the virtual next this is a pour over style carafe uh, uh capsule this this makes wait what is this oh this makes a 535 ml capsule now what's interesting though is that this is obviously a bigger capsule compared to the Alto Dolce but the Alto Dolce looks like it has the same size as the sort of signature series which makes a 230ml brew right again like the Double Espresso and the Grand Lungo let's bring out our trusty scale and this is a 200ml, 230ml capsule it's about 15 grams and this is the Alto Dolce 15 grams so basically same amount of coffee much bigger brew so it's got to be slightly more diluted which lets which lets can't really speak anymore now with so much coffee which leads me to believe that this is probably a darker brew it's more robust so you get more flavor even though it's more diluted with more water but anyway let's brew and find out now i don't have that large a cup all the cups i've used so far uh, max out at about 300 odd uh, ml so and i don't have a carafe so i have some oktoberfest beer mugs now this is going to be interesting isn't it that's a large brew hmm Oh, oh, okay. This, the Alto Dolce, the, the one that's 414 ml, this is definitely not worth it. This was the same size of a uh, 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 capsule as the 230 ml capsules, which means it has the same amount of coffee grounds in them. This is completely watered down. This is no good. I wouldn't drink this. This is, this is bad. This was a much larger capsule about 100 ml more water into this this capsule was about 20 grams i didn't show that but i weighed it um now if i were to do a pour over for 500 ml pour i'll use about 30 grams of grounds this including the capsule was about 20 grams i wouldn't say this is uh, a good brew this is also pretty light but it's better than that it just feels or not feels it basically tastes like 
uh, this coffee you get from McDonald's or 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 any or, or what do you call that? Uh, any like restaurant, a diner that has a coffee pot brewing in the corner that's just sitting there. It kind of tastes like that. It's not great, but a lot of people do drink that kind of coffee. If you wake up in the morning and you want the cheapest possible capsule for the largest amount of water that you can get, it's $1.80 for 535 ml. Go ahead. Okay, we've made it. We've come to the end of this shoot and I have tested every, well, almost every Nespresso virtual capsule they have today. Now, what are my thoughts? If you want to go for an espresso drink, don't get the virtual. I mean, you can always just get the original line of Nespresso machines, the regular Nespresso machines. Those capsules are made for the smaller type of drink. They also have more range. I mean, you always have like limited edition versions of the original line, whereas the virtual is sort of newer and there is, there's less coffee to choose from. And if, if you're just going for espresso drinks, no. The virtual line is for somebody who wants to drink a large amount of coffee at the least amount of time or the least amount of effort, right? I would get the barista creations. I mean, those are flavored coffees. I would assume somebody who wants something like this would want something nice to drink. I mean, right? So the barista creations were really nice for me. Uh, the Bianco Forte was a really good double espresso size. It was really flavorful. And if I were to really go for the 150 to 230 ml sort of brews, just go for the single origin brews, right? Um, they were the best of the lot. They had the most flavor, the most uh, uh, nuance in the brew itself. Most of the others that, that I've drunk really just tasted like uh, diner coffee. Uh, it, it, some are stronger, some are less, some are more watered down, but there's, there's, you don't get a lot of uh, complexity in there. But then again, for $1.80, this is probably the most value for money you're going to get if you really don't care about your coffee as long as you get some coffee. So that's it. Check out heartwayzone.com. See you in the next video. Woo! Hey guys, before you go, don't forget to check out heartwayzone.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Join in the conversation. Like and subscribe to our YouTube if you want to see more of these videos. Do it.